Welcome back to Frost Education, this is Zed. Today we're coming back with another video on Ideanomics. Now this one is an update and I did talk about it previously before. There will be a heavy emphasis on technical analysis and the latest news as an update for this one. So let's jump right into this one. So Ideanomics. We've covered this one quite an extensively multiple times. So let's jump right into the latest news. And if you don't know about this one, they are more of a holdings company for fintech and EV solutions. Now, on April 14th, uh, their company Tree Technologies, an electrical vehicle maker incorporated in Malaysia, that 51% of that goes to Ideanomics, entered into an Asian agreement with PT Pacific Sakti Engineering, pursuant to which Tree has agreed to supply up to 200,000 units of its 100% electric motorbikes to Indonesia through PSE its exclusive distributor during a three-year term. The agreement set a sales target up to 10,000 units in 2021, 90,000 units in 2022, and 100,000 units in 2023. Now, some people might see that this one is not significant, but it just shows you that there is a lot of expectations for this uh, exponential growth, at least between 2021 and 2022, for that PSEs, or sorry, for that, those three uh, electric bikes or 100% electric bikes so there is continuous uh interest there this is pse electrics uh or sorry engineering and nothing significant there and they've actually completed the acquisitions of timius and they're subject to term forth in the agreement so the agreement was previously mentioned back in november and in that ideanomics closed the acquisition and they have approximately 46.5 million dollars in cash consideration that's 40 million base consideration plus 6.5 million cash on hand. Now, currently we're looking into the previous ones as well. We're looking to Creston Helsel, which was added as the chief Rev revenue officer uh, agreement into well that was back on April 5th. And they have over 20 years of experience creating and delivering strong profit and losses results through team leadership, along with strong experience combining business and financial strategies with tactical execution to optimize short-term and long-term gains. Ms. Halsell has grown new businesses around disruptive technologies by identifying and negotiating and closing global deals. Prior to Ideanomics, Ms. Halsell was a partner at DKS Investments from SA from July 2014 to April 2021, where she consulted organizations in renewable tech, including storage and solar, EV charging, drones, robotics, and SAS revenues developments. And they go on a little bit on their background. But moving on there, we want to look into their assets. So from 2020 to 2019, the biggest thing that I want to look at is not revenue. It's assets because the company itself has changed a lot of what they do. So the current total assets, you're looking somewhere closer to $234 million now compared to a total liabilities and debt around $32 million. So you get to see that they're pretty afloat. They don't have much debt. Now, currently speaking, with a market cap of around $1 billion and total assets of around 234 you're coming just a little bit north of 4.6 uh, six price over book now this might be actual uh an actual let's say overpricing for some people but the current price over book for sp500 is in fact a little bit higher than 4.5 and that's a flaw in the market itself and some people are looking price over sales but that's trailing 12 months and usually the price over book is a little bit of a uh, a less of a lagging indicator than that of price over sales and in terms of the short itself from what i see here they only have around 795 here on yahoo and if you look here around 895 so it's definitely below 10 percent so a lot of people have been screaming to you know to the top of their throats uh you know short squeeze well short squeeze often occurs for low for smaller floats and a high short high short flow interest so i don't think short uh, inter, short squeeze is going to be here and more of a contribution to it but let's move on towards technical analysis and if you'd like to see more contents like this make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and the bell notification button if you'd like to join our discord server it's in the description below i'll show it to you at the very end that there's no uh commitments there before going on towards technical analysis, we need to look into institutional buyers. And institutional buyers seems to be still somewhat bullish into here. And some of them, even like Roth, for instance, um, they ended up giving a buy into Ideanomics with a point with a price target off around seven bucks. Uh, right over here, Roth Capital initiated by around seven bucks. That was on April 14th. Now, this is one of the PTs that I did find uh, for Ideanomics, and it's quite interesting because it's 
quite high compared to what we've seen previously uh, analysts talking about Adenomics. Now, on somewhere like CNN Business, we don't have an actual forecast, but it does have one buy on an analyst. Uh, the current quarter has $25 million in sales. And analyst coverage isn't that strong here, but the current median price target again is seven bucks by Roth Capital, and that's a buy. So let's move on towards technical analysis. Now, keep in mind here on the technical analysis, some of these might actually look a little bit bearish because value stocks have been sliding heavily down. Um, now, on the one week perspective, we see that bearish action moving on 30 Mays above tennis in May, which is a bearish indicator. You're seeing it's highly, highly oversold. The MACD is going negative. The histogram is increasing month to month and momentum is going negative. So we're definitely seeing that. It's not a good uh, look on it on a one-week perspective. On a one-day perspective as well, we see that negative reversal on the MACD occurring. So that's a little bit of a worrisome on the technical analysis. So that's more of a, something that a lot of stocks have been facing rather than just this one here. So yeah, the MACD is gone negative. Uh, and the willing person R is highly oversold as well on that level. ADX shows more of a slappier movement. The 10 SMA is above 30 May, but that might actually change quickly as we see two red K massive candles, almost 10% today. Now, moving average bands are dropping down a little. Volumes are picking up for sellings. Um, and it's a little bit concerning. Uh, the current moving average band or rebound your band's tops would be 324 in the top, followed by 318 for the moving average band, 289 in the middle, and in the bottom is around 260, followed by 255 for the Bollinger Bands. So we might actually get a, just a tad of a bounce back towards the Bollinger Bands if the Bollinger Bands don't drop significantly. Now, the current stochastic fast and stochastic slow are both going sharply down, and that's an indication to be careful, it might actually reach the next support. And for that, we're going to start with a Fibonacci retracement, starting off at 553, going all the way down to the 80 cents mark. And what we see here is that the significant support that it was sitting at is currently broken. Now, that 261 is currently a resistance. The next support is 192. The one after is 80 cents. Significant resistances on the Fibonacci retracements is 317, 372, 452, and 553. Current price line action shows that there's a very, very strong support at the 244. Below there, 227. Below there, you're looking at 205 to 194. Below there, you're looking at 163. And then going further down to around 134. Then a very strong one at 113, and then another very, very strong one at 1, and then 81 cents. Significant resistances here. You're looking into our current resistance into 277, and then abovewards there towards 304, and then jumping up to 330, and then 345, going upwards to 377, 425, and then going upwards to 435, and 474. Comes to the question to Ed, what do you think about this one? Look, I like Ideonomics. I like their management there. It looks like they have a lot of strength there. Uh, they're really trying to crack into the EV systems, not only North America, but also abroad into Asia. And things are looking a little bit rough for this one, but I think that might be actually just an accumulation zone. And it does need accumulation. It hasn't had a proper, proper accumulation for a while. And I think it's currently looking into breaking that 249 level. And if it does break it, then we're in trouble. But if it does stay northern off from there, it can survive these harsh market conditions. So the mar harsh market conditions are affecting a lot of stocks, not just this one. They've been sliding a lot lately. And even though the SP500 or the market is green, it's more of growth stocks that are benefiting, not value stocks. So keep that in mind. Um, I'm not giving it a buy or a sell kind of rating in that sense. It's your decision to make out of all the information you've given. And if you have extra information, drop them down in the comments below for others to watch and have a wonderful day. Now, if you made it this far into the video, I do recommend that you go ahead and join our Discord server. There's a lot of amazing folks in here. Uh, we do a lot of discussions here into the trading floor throughout the day. A lot of people are in there and we do ask questions. You can ask me uh, any question you would like on there. Uh, we do post research and DDs and we hold weekly uh, chat sessions. And we also do have a lounge in there. So make sure to actually join that and join the fun there. Have a wonderful day and a good one.